Recently, I was running an online photo editing workshop. When it came to explaining my editing with the Nick collection in Photoshop, something odd happened. There was an expectation that I would first convert the background layer to a smart object. But that's not actually what I do. Mostly, I work with individual layers, although I will convert those to smart objects for flexibility. The reason I work with individual layers is so I can use luminosity masks with them, which is the workflow I'm going to explain in this video. Here's my starting image after I've applied the initial adjustments in Lightroom. Typically, when I'm editing a colour image like this in Photoshop, I'll only use a couple of the Nick Collection plugins. These are Nick Color Effects Pro and Nick Viveza, usually starting with the Nick Color Effects Pro plugin. I'm going to start by launching Color Effects Pro from the Nick Collection palette. But before I do that, I just want to show you my palette settings by clicking this small cog icon. Notice I have it set to apply the filter to a composite layer. The composite, which is added as a new layer, is a copy of all the other layers in the image combined. With this image, it doesn't matter much because it only has a single layer, so the composite layer is just a copy of that. But if you're editing an image with lots of layers and masks, producing a composite ensures the Nick plugin is applied to the entire image. Let's close that now and then click the Color Effects option. As this starts up, we can see the new copy layer created in the Photoshop Layers palette. Then when Color Effects Pro opens, we see the image displayed for editing. When I'm editing a landscape image in Nick Color Effects, I always like to start by checking the effect of the clear view slider. It's intended for removing distant haze from a scene, but I found it can have a wonderful effect on the foreground detail and sometimes on the clouds. But a word of warning, you probably don't need to use this with high values like 50% or more. Certainly start with 50%, but then gradually reduce it until you see an effect you like. I find that 10 to 20% is usually the sweet spot if it's going to work well. When I turn the adjustments off and on, you can see the effect that it's having on the foreground. It seems to intensify the light and make it appear somehow cleaner. The only problem is that it's removing this beautiful haze over the hills on the left. Now, had this been a filter like the other filters in Nick Color Effects, I could have used the control points to protect the area, but I can't. Instead, I'll be relying on the luminosity mask to control the effect, which is what you'll see later. Looking at this image, I can see that it has some nice warm colours, but there's also a bit of a magenta colour cast in the dark rocks. The way that I like to fix this is by using the Pro Contrast filter. This is something else that I try with every image I edit in the Nick collection, even when I don't think that I need to use it. The colour effects filters are arranged in alphabetical order, grouped on the left of the interface. I'll scroll down the list until I find the Pro Contrast filter. Then as I move my mouse over it, you see a small plus icon appear on the right. Click this to add the filter, which then appears as an adjustment on the right of the interface. The reason that I'm stressing to click the plus icon is that it always adds a new filter. If you don't click the plus icon, but instead click on a filter in the list, the current filter is replaced by that filter. So, get in the habit of using the plus icon to add filters. Now, let's look at the Pro Contrast filter in more detail. The first adjustment I want to make is using the correct colour cast slider. As I move this right, you can see that it removes the colour cast from the rocks. It also gives the rocks in the foreground a wonderful clarity of light. The other slider that I like to use with most images is the Dynamic Contrast Adjustment, but I'm not going to apply that in this current filter. Instead, I'll add a second Pro Contrast filter. Remember, click the plus icon or you'll reset the other filter. I can then increase the dynamic contrast slider on the new filter to make the adjustment. Looking at the overall effect, I like the adjustment on the foreground and rocks, but not in the valley. I'll therefore restrict it to the foreground by adding a control line. To add the control line, I'll click this icon below the filter. I can then click and drag with my mouse on the image to make the selection. You can also see the control line appear below the filter. To the right of this is a small icon. When I click this, we then see the mask showing what's selected by the control lines. The white areas you see are where the filter's affecting the image. 
and the rest of the image where the mask is black isn't affected by our adjustment. We can also use the luminance and chrominance sliders to control the sensitivity of the selection to colour and light. Let's turn the mask view off now by clicking the icon again so we can see the filter's effect. And we'll quickly recap on the changes we've made so far. First, we have the dynamic contrast adjustment we've made to the foreground rocks. We can also use this filter to correct the contrast in the same area if we want to. We then have the second filter which affects the entire image and is used to correct the colour. Then finally we have the clear view adjustment which also affects the entire image. If I click the compare icon at the top of the interface, you can see the combined effect of the three filters on the image. I'm now happy with these adjustments although I don't want them to affect as much of the image as they do. So let's return to Photoshop and I'll show you the next step in my workflow. But before I do that, I'm just going to click this Convert to Smart Objects option. This is going to save my adjustments and selections as part of the image layer. Back in Photoshop, we can see the composite layer that was added has now been converted to a smart object. We then see the Nick Color Effects filter attached as a smart filter. Then attached to the smart filter list is a mask, which I'm going to use to control where my adjustments are seen. The first thing I'll do is invert the mask to turn it black. To do this, click on the mask to select it. Then in the Properties panel, you can click the Invert button. Because we've turned the mask black, it now hides the Smart Filters effect from the entire image. I'm now going to use the TK Actions Photoshop extension to select the light areas in the image. TK Actions is a third-party panel that I've purchased, but there's also a free version on the website. I'll include a link in the YouTube video description. There are several panels in TK Actions, and I want to use the Multimask panel. The first icon allows me to choose one of the light's luminosity masks. You can see the bright areas of the image are now shown in white on the mask. If you want to narrow the mask to select only the brightest areas of the image, you can click one of the other light's masks. But for this image, I'm just going to use the light's one mask. I can then click this icon showing the dotted circle, which loads the light's one mask as a selection. Having done that, I'll select the Photoshop brush and set this to paint with white. For the brush settings, I have the hardness at zero, producing a very soft edge when I paint. I also use both the opacity and flow at 100%. I can use these high values because I'll be painting through a luminosity selection. Now I can click on the mask once in the layers panel to ensure it's selected before painting over the image. I then paint over the areas where I want to reveal the Nick Color Effects adjustments. As I paint with white, you can see it creating the mask. If I hold down the Option key on my keyboard and then click the mask, you can see it. If you're using a Windows PC, that's Alt and click. When I finish painting, you can see the effect if I turn the layer off and on. As I'm satisfied, I'll clear the selection before continuing using the keyboard shortcut Command and D. The next step is that I want to add some warm light to the scene using Nick Viveza. But before I can do that, I need to create a new consolidated layer. If I didn't do that and just launch Viveza, I would be adding a second smart filter below the existing layer. To create the new consolidated layer, I'll use the keyboard shortcut Shift, Command, Option and E. That's Shift, Control, Alt and E on a Windows PC. You can then see the new layer in the Layers panel. This is a combination of the visible areas of all the other images. I'll then right click on it and convert it to a smart object. This means that my Viveza changes will be saved as a smart filter, but on that layer. If you forget to convert to a smart object, you can always do it inside of Viveza as we did with Nick Color Effects Pro. Now there are a few ways that we could add warmth to this scene, but I like the temperature slider in Nick Viveza. I don't know why, but the results seem more natural than with other adjustments. The only other adjustment I'll make inside Nick Viveza is to apply a tone curve, but you can also make whatever adjustments you like. I can then click and apply the button to make the changes and return to Photoshop. As before, I'll click the mask to select it and then I'll invert it in the Properties panel. Back in the TK Actions Multimask panel, I can now choose a luminosity mask to use. I could choose any, but the Lights 1 is probably fine for this adjustment. 
I'll then load it as a selection before clicking the black mask. Now I can paint over the mask where I want to reveal the warmer colours. If we double click the Viveza Smart Filter, we can reopen it to make further adjustments, like adding more warmth, or we could soften part of the sky. Then when we apply these changes and return to Photoshop, we see them nicely blended because of the luminosity mask. Whilst my workflow may seem like a lot of work, it's just one way of building up an effect on an image using the Knit Collection in Photoshop. You may actually prefer to use the Knit Collection's built-in selection tools. In that case, I'd recommend watching this video to understand how best to control them. I hope you found today's video helpful, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon for another video.